Hello, and welcome to the Patients Getting Paid podcast. I'm your host, Kathy Reagan Young. Today's guest is Megan Harrison, a Crohn's patient who is getting paid. She's the CEO of her own life. Megan is a freelance content creator and writer, blogging on her own website, meganelizabethlifestyle.com, about well being and sustainability, while also supporting brands which share these values with their content creation. So welcome to Patients Getting Paid, Megan. Thanks so much for being here today. Really appreciate it. Hi, Kathy. Yeah, thank you so much for having me here. It's great to be here. I love that accent. Oh my gosh, <laughs> such a beautiful accent. And it just gives you instant credibility as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> um, so if you would please just share the story of you, you know, wh whatever you want to share with us, um, any kind of background, whatever makes you you. Yeah, well, if, if you haven't already guessed from the accent, I am from England. Um, yeah, I, I've grown up uh, pretty much all my life in Leicestershire, which is a county in the Midlands in, in the UK. Um, pretty much uh, bang in the middle of England, actually, right in the centre. Um, which is really great growing up because it means that you're sort of uh, equidistant to everywhere and you can travel oh. to lots of places. Um, oh. And when awesome. I was, yeah, when I was younger, my my family, we've had a motor caravan most of our lives. So we've um, spent a lot of time exploring the UK countryside and coastline mm -hmm. um, and going camping. So I'm really quite sort of happy when I'm on a coast path in Cornwall or somewhere like that. Um, oh, it sounds lovely. And it sounds like any of the British novels that I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, good bit of uh, Pride and Prejudice or something. It, it, right, exactly. It does evoke that. Oh, yeah. lovely. So you are very young. Yeah, I'm 22. You are 22. I barely remember 22, but I know I had fun. Um, I also had not been diagnosed with a chronic illness, so hence more fun. Yeah. Um, so since this is patients getting paid, let's get to that aspect of your life. Would you please share the story of your journey to chronic preneurism? Let's hear about your, your diagnosis and then subsequent chronic preneurism. <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I think sort of my journey into starting my own business, it, it sort of starts before my chronic illness diagnosis. Oh. I, Sort of right from when I was younger, I'd always been interested in anything to do with writing, language, communication. Um, and so I, in 2016, I, I started at university here in the UK. I studied linguistics. Um, and then mm -hmm. halfway through my degree, I think probably getting on for two years now, in about March 2019, I, yeah, very suddenly one day, um, fell ill and went into hospital and got diagnosed with Crohn's disease oh, gosh. um so yeah it, it, 22 is a bit different when you when you have a chronic illness diagnosis True. um but yeah it, past couple of years have been tough and you know you there are a lot of times when you don't feel great and you know I, th I think especially 2019 when I had just been diagnosed I did have to go into hospital a few times um oh. But yeah, I'm very grateful for the support, um, both from my family and from all the sort of healthcare team, because yeah, I managed to graduate in um, September of 2020. Congratulations, um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we finally, finally got there. Um, mm -hmm. And I think throughout my degree, I had been doing my blog on the side and doing bits of freelance writing on the side and just loved it. And so when I graduated and thought, you know, I don't know if, my Crohn's means I'll be able to do the typical full-time nine to five lifestyle. Right. Um, but yeah, we just decided to go for it and Great. not looking back so far. Excellent. Okay. And it's going well for you. I recognize it's, you're very new to both things, the chronic illness and the um, chronic preneurism. But, um, but I think it's really interesting because a lot of the people that I talked to didn't get into sort of the chronic preneurism until post-diagnosis so you kind of knew ahead of time this was of interest to you and you really kind of wanted to work for yourself and and you found you had a passion and you made a business out of your passion yeah absolutely and I I sort of known for a while that I wanted to do something involving writing and social media um so 
whether that was running my own business or you know working for someone else for a digital marketing agency or something Mm -hmm. um but I think the Crohn's diagnosis really was that sort of um uh or how do you say is it like uh push to to yeah. really go for it and just right. um you know because it shows you that you don't know what's going to happen in life and so you've just got to make the most of it so true so true um so what exactly do you do you've got this website and what what do you do yeah so I do have my main website which is my blog which started off very much as a as a hobby um as something to do in my spare time but over the years, I have started to collaborate with more brands um, through it um, and sort of do some sponsored collaborations. Um, but I now also host a page on my website um, for my very new business um, called Hearth Content. And Hearth is a, the place where I advertise all of my um, freelance content creation work. Um, so I now support uh, other freelancers and brands within the well-being and sustainability umbrella and I help them with their online content creation um, whether that's sort of social media um, copy or you know blog writing. Okay so you're hiring out as a freelance yeah. content creator and um, I just want to go back to the sponsored you said you do sponsored content on your site so can you explain <clears throat> excuse me explain a little bit about what that is entailed? <clears throat> yeah so the the sort of blog part of it I guess falls under what you would call influencing nowadays. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of the word, but um, I don't like that word either. But yeah. I can't come up with a different one. I don't know. What I know. Word. I know. Yeah. So I am. Agreed. I am grateful that I have got to work with some brands in that way. So, you know, I'm grateful to have sometimes received PR products to do sort of uh, product reviews or to work with a company on a creating a sponsored blog post that goes on my site. Um, so that's yeah that's been really nice but it's probably not my biggest the biggest part of my income at the moment okay so just to be clear brands have um approached you and said for instance we have this new product and we'd like to send it to you and have you do a review or yeah. we'd like you to write something <clears throat> excuse me on on our behalf and put it on your blog site and for that we will pay you that's what yeah. you mean by sponsored yeah that's awesome. Um, but that you're saying is not the main part of your income. What is the main part of your income? This working for others, doing the freelance content yeah, creation? So, yeah, the, the main part is is the content creation. So I've got a few different clients where I do things like um, I do a lot of content repurposing at the moment. I'm okay. Well, if someone has a podcast, I help them to convert it into a blog post and um, sort of taking all of the uh, key facts from it and creating it into a written piece and then I also help people with their social media content creation so things like Instagram captions um, and sort of more general VA virtual assistant work as well. Mm, Very cool that's really cool I love um, to to hear what people are doing and how they're doing it and how they're making their money I mean that's the key to this because with patients getting paid more than anything else, I'm trying to help people know of all the possibilities that are out there. I always like to say dwell in possibility. And if you don't know what's available out there, you don't know what's available for you, you know? And I'm trying to show people, look at how people are making money and taking care of themselves. And it can be flexible and it can be remote. And, you know, for me, I I know then I work best in the morning and then again in the evening. So in the middle, I don't schedule so much. Well, if I'm working for somebody else, I don't really have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. You know, I need this flexibility. I need to be able to lay down when I need to or stretch or do whatever weird things I need to do. Thank you, Emma. Definitely. I'm I'm a morning person as well. When it gets to sort of like late afternoon, evening, that's, I'm completely switched off then. Yeah. Um, Even with a spot of tea, that doesn't happen. (laughs) I just had to get my accent in there. I don't know why I do that so bad. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm not a big tea person anymore. What? I thought I that was like a I, rule um, in your country. You <laughs> had to drink tea yeah. at a certain time and maybe eat a crumpet. I don't know. I'm completely <laughs> throwing all of my weird. I, well, yeah, I, I did. I did used to drink tea. I used to drink a lot of tea. And then when I got diagnosed with Crohn's, I, I had to cut out caffeine. Oh, um, 
so I drink more sort of herbal teas now and like oh, a lot yeah. of ginger tea gotcha like yeah that. good for the yeah. tummy stuff yeah yes. Yeah, I do that and I'm too. gluten free as well, so crumpets and anything like that. Oh, man, we're trying that. We went gluten free, my daughters and I, a couple of years ago. Um, and I personally, it was for me actually for my MS, and I we did it for three months, and I didn't feel any different. Um, now my youngest daughter is wanting to go gluten free because she's got some digestive issues, and it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to make that switch. I think it's easier than it used to be. There's a lot more no uh, products on offer, but it, yeah, That's it's true. not quite the same as, um, you know, uh, the real deal, especially, you know, things like bread. It's, yeah, there's no. still a lot of work to be done. There is, like, you have to think about what you're putting in your mouth, which I'm not good at. I like to just shove it in there. So, um, but you find the gluten-free lifestyle has helped? I Yeah, I think it has. It's been probably about three three months now um okay. and it's certainly not made things worse so that's, right that's a good thing I yeah guess. that's the thing going gluten-free can't hurt you so <laughs> you know why not except it's hard um okay so I want to talk a little bit about the impact of your business on your chronic illness so is this a full-time job for you or a side hustle? I'm it's it's an in-between thing yeah we're, okay. we're at a transition stage because sort of when I was studying at university, it was always a hobby and a side hustle. Whereas now I'm in the process of hopefully transitioning it into a full-time So you're job. ramping up. Yes, we're ramping Got it. up. Okay. Um, so I would assume that this, this uh, I, I hesitate to say job um, because job has connotations that are bad. Um, yeah. I assume that this business has, um, helped you in managing your health in a way that like a nine to five would not allow like we referenced you know you're a morning person so you know to concentrate your efforts during that time right when you're feeling your best yeah absolutely and I think if anything it's it's had a positive impact on me because yeah like like we said you can sort of organize it based on how you're feeling you know if you're having a time when you're feeling under the weather and just not in the mood then you yeah. can take a step back and that's okay um, you know, if you've got a medical appointment that you've got to go to, that can take priority and you you don't have to ask someone. You're not asking you permission. Answer. Right. Yeah. I love that. I do yeah. love that. Um, and I think just doing something you love and being honest with myself about this is what I want to do and this is what I want to pursue. That's had a positive impact on my mental well-being because I wake up and I'm excited to do the work. Oh my and gosh, you make such a big difference. It does. You just hit on something I hadn't really considered talking about before, but you are exactly right. I mean, um, doing something that you love or are fulfilled by will benefit you mentally, which benefits you physically. Yeah. And and vice versa. If you're doing something you hate or is drudgery or you hate the people you work with or all that, that has a, an enormous mental uh, and emotional impact, which obviously impacts your your physical health as well so really great point point. and when you feel like you're I would say if you can get up with a plan to be productive and at the end of the day you can feel like somehow you have contributed to this world I think you're just naturally going to feel better whereas if you wake up you have no plans you got nothing on your schedule or you're trudging off to a job that you hate either one it's just going to uh, take its toll both mentally and physically so I that's such a great point like if you can do something that you really feel good about you're going to feel better yeah <laughs> and I think I think that goes for you know not just people with chronic illness I think that's relevant true. to you know anyone in life no question that is so true um and so you said something about um being able to take breaks and whatnot so do you tell your clients that you've got Crohn's do you um let them know that you know uh we may have a deadline but I might not be feeling well do you get have you faced that yet yeah I'm I'm really sort of open about talking uh, about my health and because I think it's something that's not talked about enough in the in the sort of work industry and you know that there, there's so many talented people out there with chronic illness and yes you know that that have so, so much, yeah there's so, so much talent out there and so much to give into the world and 
you know sometimes we need that flexibility and um sort of understanding and i am grateful that some of my clients as well also have chronic health conditions and because i work with a lot of people in the sort of well-being sectors there's a lot more understanding there um so from from my point of view yeah i i'm really open and honest with my clients about my health issues and that you know luckily they're really understanding too that's great i did just read um a statistic that said seven out of ten people have a chronic illness so you know, sometimes I think we're a little nervous about letting people know what's going on because you don't want to, I know for me, when I was working um, at a job, I didn't want anybody to know because I didn't want them to think, um, to make a decision about me and my abilities before they saw me and my abilities. I wanted them to see that I was totally capable um, rather than them thinking, oh, she's got MS, we shouldn't ask her to do this or whatever. Um, but you know, the truth is seven out of 10 people have some sort of chronic illness, pretty good chance that they're going to be open. And, and, and I just think it's exhausting not to be truthful, you know, authenticity and transparency, I think frees you up in so many ways. And I think at a base level, most people really want to help you. So if you let them know, you know, I might, I might, need a little extra like an extra day or something to complete something I think most people are going to be okay with that and probably very supportive of you want to yeah. help you yeah exactly and you know I think sometimes we can assume especially in the world of work that if we tell someone we've got a chronic illness that they might then ignore us or you know not want to help us and actually there might be some support mechanisms that people can put in place to help you and I, when I went back for my final year of university after being diagnosed I got so much extra support to get through my studies and it was amazing. Like um, and accommodation. Everyone, yeah, yeah, accommodations. And so it's all, I think it's always worth bringing it up because we Agreed. assume that people won't be helpful. And, but actually more often than not, I think people will be very supportive. I agree. I agree. We have to quit assuming the worst of people, give yeah. them a chance to step yeah. up and be good people. And if yeah. they're not, I'm like screw them. I, I wouldn't want that client, time. right? I wouldn't want that client because yeah, that's going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, so is the okay? I have the question written down. Is the income is it a steady income? But <laughs> with the caveat that you're just ramping up and just just getting going, and woo woo, it's COVID. So yeah. all of my interviews now are kind of um, you know that's that's a that's something we understand that it is COVID but do you uh envision that once you ramp up and COVID ramps down that this is going to provide you the kind of steady income that you're going to need to to provide for yourself yeah I really hope so and and even at the moment I think for me there is a steady income currently um it's not a massive yeah. income you know yeah. but it's a steady one but it's steady um, good. and even because I've just graduated, I've just come from years of being in education. This is still the most money I've ever earned in my lifetime. Right. So for me, it still feels, feels like great. Good. Like you've got money coming in. Um, Good. But Lots you know, and also, yeah, things like COVID, businesses have been hit so hard, and you know, more people are like losing jobs than there are being made available. So it's you know, don't yeah. don't be too hard on yourself. I think and with with the finance side of things because it is a tough time and you know some yeah it, it's a tough time for everyone so I, yeah it is I'm very aware that you know if things might develop slower or you know money might take time but you know right. I'm, I'm not in any rush <laughs> right and you feel good about it and you're making yeah. steady income I mean that's huge that is huge um how do you market your business uh, well social media yeah okay. um a lot online um, I'm very grateful. I'm going to give a shout out to um, a membership community called Grow and Glow, here, um, which is run by someone called Bix Meldrew. Uh, and I've been part of that membership for a good, going on for a couple of years now. I think in the spring it'll be two years. And it's a membership for, you know, a variety of bloggers, but also business owners wanting to grow and connect. And they do so much like training on you know different social media and like branding and things like that and um, so that has that membership has really been pivotal in me like growing as a person and growing my business and 
you know actually not being afraid to like get my information out there Um, but yeah sort of regular social media use and like showing up online consistently um sort of planning and a lot of planning and research goes into it um and just yeah after that just hoping for the best as well right so do you have a lot of support for what you're doing like do your family and friends understand what you do and support you yeah they they're amazing I mean especially my family and like my parents I they're not they didn't have social media growing up or anything like that so I don't know if they understand it as much but um they are very supportive of what I do and I think especially because they've seen what I've gone through with my Crohn's and sort of my health issues you know they've they've been the ones sat next to me in hospital and things like that so you know they know what the condition involves and you know what I've been through and so I think they're just you know happy if I'm happy. Right and you know thank goodness we're at a point in technology that this type of work is available to us. I I often think about that for people with chronic illness like too many times people just had to leave their jobs. They had to quit their jobs because they just, you know, the confines of a nine to five job and you have to come in and you have to get up and get dressed every morning and, you know, drive here and then be here all day. And um, I, I don't, I know I couldn't, I did it for a time and I had to leave. And that's the whole point of patients getting paid was I had to leave my job and I had to, I would say my paychecks quit coming and my but my bills didn't. So I had to figure out how do I take care of myself, work from home, make, you know, and, and generate an income. And once I figured that out, that's why I'm starting patients getting paid because I just felt like this is a value to so many people. People with chronic illness need to know that this exists and, and, you know, they can dwell in the possibilities. I'm just going to serve up all the possibilities and share inspiration and motivation from other people who are doing it and, um, and help them do it too. So I'm so grateful for the technology because this wouldn't have been possible before. So we're really lucky to be living in a time that this is possible, right? Yes, yeah. No, so the, I, the technology is amazing. Oh, Absolutely. thank God. Thank God. So I usually ask about health insurance, but you're in England and I know you have free health care. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, soak that in. How nice. In England, they recognize health care as a right and not a privilege. What a concept. That was a little dig, whatever. I'm not bitter. I'm a little bitter. But we're working on that. We're working on it. I'm as soon as COVID's done, I'm going to DC. Anyway, um, that's yeah, just one we're, last. We're we're very lucky to have the NHS here. Um, it is a blessing. And you know, especially now that you know they're under such pressure with like COVID and everything, and but they're doing an amazing job. And you know, yeah, shout out to all the key workers who are just incredible and yes and yeah I still find although a lot of our appointments have moved to you know remote appointments and phone calls and video calls you know if you really need help there's still someone on the end of the phone to help you and you know um right. if you have any questions and yeah they're, they're amazing that's so good and um so that's one less roadblock to chronic preneurism for you here in the states that's a huge one and that's why that's one of my questions I ask everybody because um here, your healthcare is tied to your employer. So there's lots of unfortunate things that happen with that, including that people stay in shitty jobs with shitty bosses because they have to, um, or they feel they have to. And people stay in bad marriages, abusive marriages, because they get their health insurance for themselves and maybe their kids through their spouse's employer. It's really insane. And I'm looking forward to that being dealt with soon. Um, But that's, you know, that's, that's a big roadblock for people switching from employer based to working for themselves. Um, There, there are opportunities now, and we're going to be exploring that. In fact, some of the experts that I'm going to be having on the pod um, are like attorneys dealing with our disability, which also you don't have um, insurance and and healthcare and how to go about, you know, finding that um, when you're working for yourself. But I did want to, I always want to ask about the health insurance thing, but good on you that you don't have to worry about that. That's one less problem. Um, um, So I want to ask about any special apps or tools that you find helpful, either in your work or in dealing with chronic illness that you could share with this community. 
Yeah, um, I mean, I, especially with, with my business and tools for that, I'm actually a classic pen and paper person. Um, really? And yeah. you're so young. I would have I thought for sure you'd be all digital. Yeah, I do all this work, you know, involving sort of social media and, and technology. But right. when it comes down to it and staying organized, I just, I love my diary and my pen and paper. And I just, you know, like being able to see everything out in front of me without having to load up my laptop or put my phone on um, yeah. and then just even things like um, I, I'm a big fan of sort of journaling for well-being and diary writing um, and just being able to get you know a notebook out and just have a big mind dump and put everything mm. that's in your head you know out on paper in front of you get I just it out. It's so freeing yeah. um, but I have had to uh, admit that I have switched to some some apps and um Sort of software to help me um I've just set up Asana for sort of project management oh that's a good one yeah um that that's really good app um just to sort of check what you need to do each day and organize everything um and I'm again I'm just on the free free version of that um which I find really works for me at the moment um but I know uh, people using things like Trello and ClickUp so they they may also be good options to look at as well Okay, excellent. Um, yeah, I've just started using, well, we talked about this before we went live on here today. I just started using Calendly, which is amazing for what I do because it just, it allows, I just send a link and it allows people to check their calendar and mine at the same time and book something. And I am completely hands-free. I have nothing to do with it. I just get a message saying, you know, Megan just booked with you. And, um, and also it, it allows me then, so once you booked, you actually, you couldn't actually submit it until you filled out my form that I had um, attached to that, which asked you all kinds of questions and, you know, reminded you to send me your headshots and all these kinds of things. So it has just revolutionized and streamlined so much of my work for me. It kind of does the work for me, which is the hallmark of a good, you know, helper app, I think. So mm -hmm. I am, I'm going to be asking everybody that comes on the show <laughs> what kind of apps they're using, yeah. you know, for organization and for, um, and for things like, um, you know, you do a lot of um, social media. So like I just started using Coast Schedule too. Do you use anything like that to schedule your posts? I, I've not heard of that one actually. Um, I, I do use uh, an app called Planoli for Instagram. Okay. because that allows you to plan out your feed on the app um, and then also schedule and write the captions and save hashtags it's a really great app um yeah i i've always thought about using calendly if that's how you say it um yeah. yeah because i i do see the benefits and sort of with the launch of my um freelance business i offer sort of discovery calls as part of the process um and yeah, that would be really good for booking. But then I'm always like, you know, if I make this slot available these days available next week, what if I then don't feel very well on that day when someone's booked something? Yeah. Um, which, so at the moment, yeah, I've, I've kind of been organizing things over email because I'm like, chronic illness is so unpredictable. So, yeah. But that, I have to tell you, that was part of my reason for getting Calendly because I can put in there, and I don't think I have, now that I'm saying this, I don't think I have on this, event um the pgp interview but on others it says right there at the top in bold you know basically we're gonna book this but if i'm not feeling well or if you're not feeling well like we can reschedule you know just fyi i'm dealing with a chronic illness that can change on a dime so i just like to give people a heads up and i haven't run it and i have had to change the meetings and i haven't had any pushback people you know since I've told them up front, this might happen. I think that that kind of sets it up for not being a problem later. So you might consider that. You can just put a little yeah, note I in there. Yeah, I think maybe you, yeah, you've, uh, you've made me want to go and uh, set it up after this. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, it, it has really changed my life. That's no, that's not an overstatement. I spent so much time just booking calls and stuff. It was crazy. Um, do you, have you had to, and I, again, I recognize your, you know, new fairly new to this but do you do anything in terms of um organization like quickbooks anything for for keeping up with your books 
payments, ingoing, outgoing, money, all that yeah, sort of thing? I, I do. I'm I'm a big spreadsheet fan for when it comes to finances, things like that. Um, um usually use like Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Um, they're like my two go to spreadsheet um platforms. Um, but yeah, so for finances, for sort of uh, income and expenses, and then also I do use them for client work and to distinguish what tasks I'm doing for each client and um, to make it a bit clearer for me to manage as well. Good. Okay. Um, I just started using QuickBooks last year and um, it's been very helpful because I can categorize things. So obviously income and expense, but more importantly, really breaking each expense down because some things are going to be, um, I can write them off on my taxes. I mean, the proof is going to be in the pudding because we're coming up to tax season over here. And so this will be the first year that I can hope and pray this will be like a couple of keyboard clicks as opposed to what I had been doing in the past, which was overwhelming, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, so I posted on the Patients Getting Paid Facebook page for any questions the community members might have for patients like you that are already getting paid. Um, one of the questions they posted was, how do you deal with rejection? And, you know, I'm hoping you're going to say, I haven't had to. <laughs> I have, I have. No. Okay. Yeah. So as part of the sort of journey to getting to really deciding to go for it with the, my own business, um, after I graduated sort of um, September, October time in 2020, I did apply for a lot of jobs because I just thought, you know, let, let's keep prospects right. open, you know. And so I think I had I had another spreadsheet, um, <laughs> a spreadsheet of about, I think about 20 or 30 jobs, which I applied to. And I they completely didn't hear back or, you know, heard back and didn't get it. Um, oh. So, yeah, no, I absolutely have had to deal with rejection and sort of from my point of view I've just tried not to take it personally which probably mm -hmm. does, I don't know whether that helps much but especially during Covid you know yeah right. so many mm -hmm. people are losing jobs at the moment and when there is a job available you've got hundreds if not thousands of people applying for it um, so just try not to take it personally because we're going through a really tough situation in the working world right now um, oh, true. and you know hopefully if you can stick it out I really do believe that the right thing will come at the right time mm -hmm. yeah and in terms of clients you haven't had to deal with any rejection correct I don't not clients as such I've I've had a few because I've done a few bits where I'm sort of more like journalism type things where I'm writing for external publications as well mm -hmm. And so I've had a few like pitches to magazines and things that I haven't gone through. Um, oh, maybe just like not quite the right time or they've maybe got something similar. So I've right. had a few of those that haven't been successful, but um, currently all the clients I've got, you know, we've got a good relationship going. Good, 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 good. And that can be your very best marketing, by the way, is just the word of mouth of your existing clients to tell others, you know, that they, other businesses that, that they work with you and they're happy with you. And if you haven't already done so, I would highly suggest testimonials on your website yeah. from your existing clients. That speaks volumes. Yeah, I am I am very lucky. A couple of my clients actually have been word of mouth. Um, so I, yeah, I'm really lucky with that. And I've just um, recently set up the page on my website for, for my business. And you know, th thankfully, my clients have been really lovely, and I've I've got um a few testimonials that I can able to add to that. Excellent. So the next question, and I don't know if if Crohn's causes cog fog, like MS has cog fog, but people want to know how you deal with days when you're cog foggy and have to talk with others where you might like forget words or just feel spacey. Uh, do you deal with that, or do you have any tips you can offer the community? Yeah, I, I think we call it brain fog in the UK. Um, okay. that's what, yeah, that's what I would call it. Um, yeah, so definitely familiar with that. Um, again, I think that's one of the reasons why I find it so important to be open about my health and just say yeah. like, these are some of the issues I can go through when I'm working. So if it takes me a bit longer to do something, then you know, you'll know you know why. Um, and again, it's yeah, not putting pressure on yourself. If you need to rest, like absolutely take that time to rest because it's so important. Um, and I think from a medical point of view for, you know, especially 
from Macron's point of view and having a, a bit of a messed up digestive system. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's something that's ongoing, obviously like making sure you're getting things like your blood tests done regularly, checking your vitamin levels, because sometimes, you know, if you're low on like B12 or iron or something, then that can contribute to like fatigue and brain fog. Um, but yeah, just, just being honest and like letting yourself, letting your body, letting your mind rest um, and don't like put pressure on yourself if you're not feeling great um, on a particular day, then, you know, allowing yourself that time off. Mm -hmm. Give yourself some grace. Yes. Yes, I love that. Okay, the big question, what advice would you give to other chronics who want to do something more flexible or remote, either full-time or as a side hustle? I would say to just go for it, to just go try it out. It. You've got no harm in trying. Um, and it, it, this is something I've been thinking uh, about a lot recently and sort of just because I've recently decided to take that step myself. Um, you know, if, if you've got a skill, if you've got something that you are passionate about and, you know, that people are interested in or, you know, that helps people in some way that solves a problem, then you've got your foundations there already. Exactly um, right. And, you know, the, there's talk about whether you know is like are the online spaces are oversaturated you know is there a lot of people but you know we're all unique we're all different and so I think there is a space online for everyone because you all bring you know a different approach your own perspective to something um and so yeah there's you can absolutely just just have a go and just try do it. it you know even, like if something, even if something doesn't work out you can learn from your mistakes and you know, look at something, well, like, why didn't this work? Can it be improved in some way? Um, and, you know, I, yeah, I, I've done a lot of work with people in the chronic illness community, you know, like yourself, and everyone is so supportive of one another. And I'm grateful that, yeah, some of my clients do have chronic illness. And um, there's a lot more, like, inclusivity nowadays as well. And, you know, um, a lot more sort of honesty and transparency. So, so true. Yeah. Just get out there and do it. Try it. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And I always tell people, um, don't be afraid to fail. And I'm using the air quotes on fail. Um, because what is a failure? I don't think you truly fail unless you quit. Yeah. So if you set your mind to this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it for all the right reasons. I've got an idea that can serve people. I you know, fix a problem, whatever it is. And it serves me and my health and my family and whatever then don't just don't quit just don't quit try something and if that doesn't work learn from that but keep going and keep iterating and eventually you will get to the point where it all comes together and and works for both sides so you're serving people and you're helping yourself in your health yeah. so I love that just do it yeah I think that's the, the quote as well isn't it someone said like learn to rest not quit so you know yes. if something if something's not working out and you you know you're not really feeling it anymore you know don't don't quit just take right. a step back and reanalyze and yeah. yeah go from there I like it I like it all right so if people want to learn more about you or your online business where can they find you so so my website where everything is on is meganelizabethlifestyle.com um yeah everything's on there blog um yeah business information newsletter um I've I've recently launched um a newsletter called the mindful journal uh, which is a really extension of all things well-being and sustainable living. Um, and there's a little, maybe a little free ebook for people who subscribe. Oh, good to know. <laughs> Excellent. How about um, social media? Um, so yeah, all of my social media on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, um, it's all at Megan E Lifestyle, all the same handle. Um, but I have also just set up another Instagram account called at half content which is for my um content creation work as well and are you saying at hearth like h-e-a-r-t-h -H, at yeah. hearth like hearth and home got it yeah yeah excellent um thank you so much for sharing your story with us megan i wish you all the best in your chronicpreneur endeavors and in your health and in your life thank you so much for being here thank you very much for having me i've, I've had a great time <laughs> me too good to meet you take care <laughs>